On June 4, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov visited Guinea as part of his ongoing efforts to strengthen Russia's influence in West Africa. This region has seen a series of coups and increasing dissatisfaction with traditional allies like France and the United States, leading some countries to pivot toward Moscow. Lavrov's frequent visits to Africa in recent years underscore Russia's strategy to expand its influence on the continent, often through notorious mercenary groups such as the Wagner Group. Since 2016, Russian private military companies have established a presence in countries like Chad, Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, the Central African Republic, CAR, and Libya. In Mali, about 84% of the population reportedly views Russia favorably. In contrast, anti-French sentiment has been growing since France's 2014 intervention against jihadist groups failed to achieve its objectives. Russian-led international media have amplified criticism of France's efforts, positioning Russia as a peace supporter, aiming to contribute to African stability. Consequently, French troops have been withdrawing, while some radical Islamist groups have regained strength. Russia's deepening engagement in Africa over the past decade is often linked to its Cold War era policies. During that time, the Soviet Union viewed Africa as an ideological battleground, supporting anti-colonial movements and providing development assistance. Although Russia's presence diminished following the Soviet collapse, it has reasserted itself, especially after the 2014 Crimean crisis, as part of its broader confrontation with the West. Russia is keen to maintain its influence in Africa, exploiting regional instability and ongoing conflicts. Despite relatively minimal investment in time and funding, Russia has been steadily expanding its presence in various African countries. This strategy helps counter Western efforts to isolate Russia and generates positive publicity. Russian authorities have successfully filled power vacuums in unstable and war-torn countries, particularly in the Central African Republic. France's long-standing influence in the Central African Republic, militarily, economically and politically, failed to bring significant progress, allowing Russian mercenary groups like Wagner to support the current government and curb rebel advances. Wagner's involvement in the Central African Republic illustrates Russia's opportunistic approach, capitalizing on France's shortcomings to position itself as a new security partner. Moreover, Russia's presence in Africa serves to divert attention from its ongoing war in Ukraine, which began in February 2022. Facing heavy casualties, Russia has recruited additional mercenaries from African countries such as Rwanda, Burundi, Congo, and Uganda. These mercenaries are attracted by initial payments of $2,000, monthly allowances of $2,200, health insurance, and promises of Russian citizenship for themselves and their families. For many African states, Russia is one of several external players. Russia's recent activities in Niger and Burkina Faso suggest that it leverages political influence to exploit valuable resources, such as gold, in West Africa, a highly profitable endeavor. Estimates indicate that Russia has earned up to $2.5 billion from West African gold, which is then funneled to Moscow to support its war efforts in Ukraine and circumvent international sanctions. Despite these efforts, Russia remains a relatively minor player in sub-Saharan African trade. Its economic activities are driven by state-owned firms' capital expenditures, focusing on credit provision, investments, mergers, acquisitions, and joint ventures. Russia's military activities in Africa have become a crucial tool in its foreign policy, allowing Moscow to challenge Western powers and assert itself as a significant global actor.